exactly one year ago in, in Japan, in Tokyo, I was a uh, inter uh, exchange student to Sofia University, and uh, I met a former member over there. And uh, the Lord made that former member open up and tell me about the family. So I had never heard of the family before that. My parents were part of a, a movement called uh, it was the shepherding movement that had to do with a lot of charismatic Holy Spirit gifts, uh, baptism of the Holy Spirit, and the shepherding movement. And uh, it was called Covenant. It was this church name. And my grandfather uh, actually started it with three other guys in Fort Lauderdale, called the Fort Lauderdale Five. And um, I grew up kind of. I was born into that, but then that church fell apart. It was a lot like what the family had the um, the R and R period. Yeah. Well. Our church got to that period and then exploded and was no more. But it had a lot of the spiritual reality of the spirit, and it was very bi biblically based, and even had down to communal living. And so um, all of the people that went out of that, myself included, were homeschooled and kind of lived outside the church and lived kind of a gypsy, renegade Christian life. And uh, we never fit into any of the churches. Here and there, we found a few little ones, but. We were moving so much. My parents, my dad played the violin. He was in the, the Detroit Symphony, and then he went to, we moved to Indiana. I was born in Lansing, Michigan, sorry. Uh, and then we finally went to Miami, and uh, that was 1992, about two weeks before Hurricane Andrew came. Um, and I was homeschooled up until about eighth grade, where I had to go into the system school, and I hated it very much. So it prompted me to study Japanese and get I think the Lord put that on my heart because I really wanted to get out of that place, that little weird, we lived in Naples, Florida at that time, and it was very, uh, very dead. So I went to Japan. The first time I was 16, and I went for a month, and the Lord just really shook my life up right then, right around then. Just um, I was a Christian before that, but... Um, I really wanted to serve the Lord at that age and decided to give my life completely to his service, not really knowing what that meant because I didn't really know of a church where I could go. Maybe I had to start up my own church or something someday, go to Japan and study Japanese. And I really wanted to witness to the Japanese. That was my, my dream. And uh, I don't know why. I just really loved the people and the culture. And um, when I finally went there, uh, it, the Lord gave me five families to stay with over a course of one month with the Rotary Club. So uh, that was, was pretty cool. And then I came back and I never looked at the world the same way again. I uh, went to college, University of Miami, and I just, as soon as I could, I tried to get to Japan again to learn Japanese. And sure enough, you know, well, that, that's a huge long story about Japan, but and the Lord did a lot of miracles around that time in my life. And uh, finally, at the very end, he introduced me to the family. The first day I met the family was the day that I found out I couldn't stay in Tokyo because I wanted to become an English literature, um, you know, studier. Uh, gosh, I haven't been in college. For, I can't even sound, use those smart words. Well, I wanted to study English literature at Joshi uh, University, Sophia University, but um, I missed the deadline by one day for um, for the you know acceptance letter. So um, I was just really, you know, what am I doing? I, I didn't, what is the Lord doing? I knew that he'd led me this far, and I was like, now I have to go back to America? Well, that day, um, it was a rainy day, I think, and I met uh, a girl named um, Abe Ai, and I'm basically walking from campus to campus. Was she Japanese? And, uh, she was Japanese, mm -hmm. yeah, but she was going to the English campus, the same one that I'd been going to for the whole year, but I had never met her the whole time, not even once for the whole year. So it was very very strange and we just started talking it's like oh yes my dad's a pastor and I was oh really my grandfather was a pastor and we just uh, started to it was it was really the Lord because that was I mean for the next two months I got to you know get to know her a, a little better and learn about the family well that was another strange occurrence because she didn't want to tell me about it honestly she thought it was you know I mean she was pro family she wasn't against it whatsoever um, in fact, she didn't even want to leave. Uh, she was, I think, in an MM home. And, uh, but she, in order to survive at this school, you know, you can't tell people that you're homeschooled in Japan and still be a master's 
degree student at a top-notch university. So um, she wouldn't tell anybody about the family. In fact, I think I might have been the first one outside of the family to know that she was with this group. And the way that the Lord made her tell me was was pretty funny. I don't know if I have yeah, a minute to like explain to that. that. Um, we were going to these, I found a few really good churches in Japan, really small, just devoted believers of Jesus Christ. And they were just so sweet and so cool. And I wanted to bring her to these churches because she'd never been to a church like that. Um, so one day we were we were about to go to uh, one Sunday morning. We were, we were in Shinjuku Station, or I was in Shinjuku Station. And I was going to meet her in Ikebukuro Station, which is a little bit farther up. And uh, I kind of boarded the train that she was on, just timed it exactly right, just sort of by intuition or by guidance of the the Lord, found it. And just for fun, I was like, hmm, I think she's in this car. And I walked up and I just sort of peered over her and I was pretending to be like a, you know, like a lewd old man or something and being yucky. And I was looking over and she was reading something and she didn't notice that I had found her in this car. It was a huge train. So it was very, you know, I found it right away. And I was like looking and I said, hmm, the fast from worldly input day. Eh? What's that? That looks interesting. And then she looked up and she was, oh, she closed, she closed the book really fast. She said, oh, hi. <laughs> and because she, you know, it was just the beginning of the renewal, right? The first week, I think it was about to start. Sorry. Anyway, um, I didn't, I'm very, you know, totally went over my head. I didn't ask, didn't delve any farther. But we went to church and it was really nice. And then we went to this tea house and um, we were talking about our, our lives because she was homeschooled, which was very unusual. And she was really solid Christian. I never met a Christian with such devotion to the Lord and such like just really rich in the word and very new about spiritual combat better than anybody that I ever met and we, we were pretty involved with that stuff so I was really interested to say the very least and uh, we were just talking you know I saw her Bible it was this old Bible with all this old King, old King James too it's so funny and she'd never been to America or only once for a visit and um, so I asked her uh, you know more about her life and um, she just sort of she kind of opened up that it felt that you know she hadn't been really with the family for a while what she was saying was she was lacking fellowship and she really missed it a little bit felt a little bit far removed and I and I told her oh wow well you know no matter what you're still part of the family and I had no idea what the family was and then she just sort of like opened her eyes and like looked at me okay well she sort of like looking up okay lord I guess I have to tell him and I was like, uh, tell me what? <laughs> and she said, okay, well, you have to promise you won't freak out. And then she proceeded to open up about the family and just told me everything she could. And I was like, what? That's okay. It sounds a little strange, you know, FFing, whatnot. But okay, I can see how the Lord might possibly, I don't know. I was like, God, what, what's going on here? But um, it really, I, I learned more and more and I just was was uh, that was how I in was introduced to it by the way I don't think she would have told me <laughs> that soon except the Lord put those little funny situations together to make her open up about exactly a year ago about April it was spring 2004 so then I had to two months after that I had to go to America so we had to kind of say goodbye and I had to go to the states and um, go back to school there because honestly I I didn't, even though I was getting to learn about the family, um, it was so crazy during those two months. And my life, all my Christian friends kind of attacked me after, not all of them, but most of them, my churchy friends just did not like this girl at all. <laughs> and they were like, Mike, you've backslided. We had so much faith in you. And man, I'm sorry, but we just, you know, we don't, we don't like her and, and you're, you're, you're fallen. <laughs> A lot, not all of them, but it was pretty funny. So there were a lot of spiritual battles that came with that. That happened in Japan. Actually. In Japan. Yeah, right, yeah. I'm sorry, yes. And then finally, when I went back to the States, you know, I just wanted to go with the flow. I wasn't going to, I didn't have any move, the Lord, any check to kind of drop everything and go right away. And sure enough, there were a few other things that had to be done. When I got to Florida, there was five hurricanes that hit the week after I got back. So, um, just like the first time we came to Florida, there was this, you know, Hurricane Charlie and Hurricane Ivan, Hurricane what, whatever, right. on both coasts. And my family lives on Miami and Naples coast, both west and east coast of, of Florida. So, so um, uh, and the weird thing was my family kind of inherited some spirit of the family, if I can say that, because 
the, the day of the first hurricane, my cousins and a few other people decided to move in with us. So we had our own commune going on in this. We have a pretty big house. Uh, my dad isn't like super rich or anything, but he works enough to, to be able to um, provide for them. So we had this just emergency after emergency and then school started and I went to school for a while and it was just not going anywhere and it was just very, very dead. Such what can I say? University of Miami. There's even a Mo letter that mentions it as one of the most, edu you know, ev evolutionary system schools. But um, anyway, I met another guy in the family in Taiwan, um, and I, I went to a site called www.stargazers.com, www I think. And uh, I don't know if anybody's heard of that, yeah. but it's a really filthy, chock full, cool site yeah. of Mo letters, everything. And, and uh, I hadn't really read much besides the activateds, and you know, I'd glanced through a few Mo books um, before, but n I didn't have anything with me. So I was reading these things on the internet, just like you know, the down destruction of America, the horror, and you know, reading the Bible, um, applying it to the prophets to America's downfall, and just I just it was like I was going through shock. I couldn't. I used to be kind of pro-American, so it was pretty <laughs> wake up. But um, anyway, yeah, that was probably the last. I, I got in touch with that guy, and uh, he, he kind of <laughs> inspired me. Well, I was still in contact with uh, my friend in Japan, and, and she mentioned, why don't, you, why don't you mail activated? And I did, and, and uh, Connie got my letter. She uh, immediately told Tim to, she was like, oh, we found somebody that's interested in meeting the family, and had Tim Drummer call me, but uh, I think it took like like three, it was a, it took a long time, basically, but finally I got in touch with them. Um, at that point I was starting to witness at school and getting very out of touch with school world of death and emptiness and kind of going around and posting like strange truths in the classrooms and walking around with family music I'd downloaded from the family.org site and uh, just kind of, you know, my dad was looking at me like, you need to decide what you're going to do, son, because <laughs> you can't keep doing this and be in school. He's a professor there, so I get free tuition, and it's everybody thought I was crazy to drop out in the middle of my junior year, but it was absolutely perfectly fine with me and the Lord. So um, anyway, yeah, uh, I met Tr Tim um, and Tony and Tina and Gabe and Crit and uh, somebody else I'm forgetting down in Miami. And they were just the coolest looking Christians that I'd ever <laughs> met. I, I hadn't actually met many in the family yet. I'd met Isamu um, back in Japan, but just once briefly. So um, this was the first meeting that really confirmed it for me too. So after that, I, I started to meet with them more and just one thing led to another and just the Lord finally got me out of school and I joined the family. Well, my vision for the future is is getting clearer and clearer because all this stuff about space city and these weapons, these spiritual tools and gifts that the Lord is giving us is so far beyond anything that I've ever imagined before. Spirit helpers. Um, I, I don't have a very clear cut goal for what I'm supposed to do except the highest will of the Lord in any place to be, you know, as much as I can to follow follow him but my vision is <laughs> growing <laughs> to say the least of I, I have no idea what's what's happening right now except that it seems like we're getting pretty close to the end and the family is going through a major change right now as I understand um, and uh, I'm just playing it by ear seeing what comes next this is my second week in the family by the way so the fact that the Lord brought me to Wordstock this soon um, was very much a miracle. It was definitely a miracle. And in fact, I shouldn't even be here right now. I should, according to the, the original plan, <laughs> I was supposed to be in North Carolina helping my aunt and uncle right now move trees around. Um, after I worked off my debt from Japan, it took a few months, um, I went to North Carolina to drop off a car. And I ran out of money when I got there. And they were in charge of my plane ticket to go back to Miami to join the family. And I believe that was Satan's last ditch effort to keep me from joining. But guess what? Crit and Jason, two guys from my home, Miami, 
were on a business trip from Miami to Raleigh, North Carolina. Actually, not even Raleigh, where I was. It was like an hour away from Raleigh. They happened to be canning on the same street that I was living on with my aunt and uncle that I had just come up for a week, you know, just to drop off a car. It was a little business of my own. But, um, and they were leaving on the same day that I originally wanted to go back in order to have time to go to Wordstock. So we met, I saw them and I was unbelievable. I couldn't believe it. It was these, they were a rescue mission sent straight from the Lord to, to come and, and get me. It was so awesome. And also, um, Ado called me, Ado called me on the phone um, by accident too. Well, by the Lord. Somehow he got my phone number, didn't know who it was, was calling for Hugh and Gwen um, and was asking for them. And I was still in the system. I was like, are you in the family? He's like, yes. Oh, where are you? Texas. Oh, are you? Do you know about Wordstock? Yes. I'm helping to organize it. Not knowing who that was. Oh, wow. I'd love to go. <laughs> I'll wash dishes. I'll do anything, please. And I was, well, I don't see your name on the list here. But uh, that led to another um, possibility for me to come here. Just, just a lot of things the Lord did. Um, so I have not much time to, to plan out the future as, as there are so many things happening every day, but just to seek the Lord's highest will in every place. And, and that's been exciting enough for the, for the time being. Finish my babes course. That's my plan. Finish that. And, uh, just anything that the Lord wants me to do, I'm, I'm here to do his will. So I'm very thankful. Well, I was I was raised up in Japan. I was born there and um, just moved everywhere from Nagano, Osaka, uh, Tokyo, Fukuoka, Nagoya, and um, a lot of experiences, good experiences, and I'm sure learning stages involved. Um, and uh, at one point, I went to Russia for about almost a year. And we, uh, my whole family came back to Japan again. Russia, I would say, was a place that I might consider even going back to. It's just the time I was, I was pretty young, but the time I was there just was so amazing for me. From Russia, we came back to Japan. And then from Japan, our visa didn't quite work out over there. So the government kind of gave us the boot. And from there, you know, my life took a sharp turn, you know, coming back to the States. I kind of, you know, left everything that I was uh, taught, you know. I mean, it was still all there. It was all buried inside of me. That's one thing that I'm so thankful for, you know, because uh, no matter what happened to me from there, I took many different roads. You know, I had a band at one point, and uh, being in the music world is very, um, there's so much temptation out there. You know, so it's a good thing I had that word instilled in me as a young, young guy in the family, you know. Yeah, when we came back to the States, uh, my parents did go FM. And from there, that's when I took the down road, you know, because I figured, oh, you know, I'm not in the family anymore. Let's let's try all the things out there, you know, the world has to offer. You know, I heard all this stuff from the past, and, you know, it didn't mean anything to me at the point because I, have, I wasn't steeped in it yet. I didn't really know it or wasn't influenced by it. So I jumped into it full steam. You know, I, I got into a lot of things like, like uh, drugs, alcohol, and music, like I said. It was a slow progression, but you know, the slow weakening of your spirit is just, you know, one compromise after another until you don't even realize where it's taking you. And yeah, it just took me down that road. And little by little, you know, I started thinking, boy, you know, I have some, I'm supposed to be doing something, you know, even I was, what, I was 19 years old, I believe, 19, 18 or 19. And I was really getting involved in the music. Yeah, I had a couple of friends who who heard me singing or something. And they said, oh, you know, there's a band looking for a singer. Why don't you go try out for them? And it, it, it wasn't really much. It was just a bunch of, uh, you know, new musicians, I would say. 
my parents. <laughs> uh, my dad is, oh boy, which name should I go by? Sir Robert, Newhart, Bobby, and uh, my mom is uh, Claire. And I love them very much. Uh, they've really instilled in me a lot, a lot of things. So I got ten brothers and sisters, and there's six, six of us boys and four girls. I'm number four. Um, I, I was the first one to rejoin from my family, and a little after that, uh, my brother Jeremy had rejoined as well, which was re very inspiring for me. You know, seeing the fruits of you know coming to the family and um he's in argentina now i don't hear from the guy much jeremy i'd like to hear from you but uh i hear i guess he's doing good out there uh yeah again i give it all to you know the word that was instilled in me when i was younger it was just Everything that I did, everything that I, I had such high ideals, you know, being in the system, like, okay, you know, I'm going to take this band and bring it somewhere, you know. But always in the back of my mind, I was like, what am I doing for the Lord? You know, I, I believe in God with all my heart. What am I doing with this? And it just constantly was on me, you know. It's like the spirit of conscience was just tearing at me. And the only thing I could do to avoid that was to throw it out piece by piece, you know, like, okay, I'm not going to listen to that. I'm not going to listen to that. And it, it was a slow process that, you know, I started taking things out of the picture until I came to one point where I was like, whoa, you know, I came to God. And it was like, oh my gosh, am I going to throw this out as well? And that's what kind of freaked me out. And uh, that's what brought me back to the family. I was like, whoa, you know, I got to do something. And it's the Lord, the Lord's really really worked in my life in just so many ways you know I, he brought me to the depths of myself to to see what I had you know from the point that I I realized you know the road I was taking and where it would lead me and I was actually kind of bitter towards the family you know with my stories and such and I'd I'd comment to other family members you know oh you're just brainwashed you know oh whatever you know but um when I got to that one point, you know, where I, I was going to throw God out of the picture, I got so desperate, you know, and I, I, I really prayed. I said, Lord, you know, do whatever it takes because I can't find it in myself to, you know, step back in to anything, you know. And I was like, oh, the family's not it still. I'm, I'm not going to join the family, but God, do what you will with me, you know. And um, I started reading my Bible. I started reading a couple chapters every night and... You know, I thought, okay, this would give me peace of mind, you know. But rather than that, it just pricked my conscience more, you know, like, okay, God, what am I doing still? I'm just, you know, doing my regular job. I had a job building fences at the time. <laughs> and um, and so I got to that point. I was reading my Bible, and uh, it just, I couldn't deal with myself anymore. To, and, you know... The music and drugs on top of that just really was killing me. And I, I almost went crazy because I was fighting God, you know. And so there's one thing I, that came to mind, you know, what am I going to do about this, you know. And I guess it was the Lord who told me, you know, just go to the nearest family home and talk to them. And it was in South Carolina. So I, I drove up to... Hugh and Gwen's home and I just poured my heart out to them I was like listen you know this is where I'm at and I need help but I'm not going to join the family what does the Lord want to tell me you know <laughs> and so they they sat down with me and said you want to hear from the Lord you want to hear what he has to say I was like yeah 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 you know it's amazing I, I really I really believed in the Lord's voice through them, even though I was very hesitant, you know, that one thing, I was sure the Lord was going to give me something, you know, because I was so desperate, I was like, God, you know, and they sat me down, and they just uh, got this amazing prophecy that was just hit every point, you know, the Lord saying that he used that time period to bring me to the end of myself, you know, which he does repeatedly, in fact, you know, but, um, 
and I just broke down and I was like, this is it, you know, I'm joining the family and all my worries, everything that I was holding back, it was just like that instant gone. And, um, so I wanted to drop out right then. They said, okay, you're going to, are you going to do this right now? And I was like, yeah, I'm going to go home, quit my job, quit my band. And that's what I did. I just drove home that same day. And the next day I just went to my boss. I said, listen, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to go serve the Lord now. He thought I was crazy. And my band as well. The funny thing is with the band, I didn't think we were all that, but you know, when the enemy sees that, you know, the Lord's got your number, he's calling you, he puts anything in your path. And we had just gotten offered a regional record label. It's, it's not the tops, but you know, it's something to further expand you. And at that point it didn't mean anything to me. It was just like, whatever, you know? And, um, so I packed my stuff, my music, I took it with me and I made a big bonfire up there and I burnt it all. And it didn't mean anything to me at the time. I was just so full of the spirit. It was, it was so powerful. Well, I mean, I wasn't in the big circle. I don't know if there was, I'm, I'm sure there was a big circle of anti-members at that time, but I was more just, uh, you know, I didn't go onto any sites and get the latest updates on what's happening. It was more just uh, in order to appease myself, you know, and what I was doing in the world. I had to fight against what was pricking me, you know, in order to appease my conscience, really. And so I did that by attacking the family. Any wrong that happened to me in the past, you know, I brought it up. And when you do that, you know, the enemy just really pours into that, you know, and he just really beefs it up is what he does to where it's like, oh, my God, wow. You know, you start thinking on some memories in the past, and it's just so out of proportion. And you believe it, too. You know, the enemy can do that with, with the little amount that you give him. And like I wrote in uh, one of the FSMs, it's, it's really, you can choose to be brainwashed by whatever you choose to really, you know, and I came to that point where I just choose to be brainwashed by the word, you know, because that's what it is. Being in the world, everything out there is just brainwashing material. And that's what I'm so thankful for the word, you know, it washes you, except, you know, it cleans you. I would tell you, I'm sure the Lord brought you through so many things for the purpose of rejoining and making an impact in the family because there's certain qualities that you do have that um, that the Lord can really use. You know, you've gone through many things and you've experienced the other side to a different degree than a lot of people have, which makes you not better, but you know, you've experienced certain things that others haven't. Now, I was pretty young when I uh, when I did leave the family, I mean, I, I remember some things, but you know, when you mature, it's like you, you see more of the spirit and of the things. But when I, when I rejoined it, the family was at a weakened state, you know, and it's just a miracle. That's how I know, you know, because I've questioned, my gosh, you know, we're such messes. How can anyone choose to, you know, drop out and give their lives to the Lord in the state we're in, you know? with all my problems and everything, but it's really, it's really the spirit, you know, the spirit of the Lord can just, you know, take anybody and draw them out. And that's what happened to me. The family was at a very weakened state, but you know, it was still the Lord's family. And so he brought me out of that. And since then, you know, I'm sure all of our prayers, you know, from everyone around the world have just really that's that's what it's from you know the desperation of people like lord help us and just things you there's such a noticeable difference in the discipleship of each family member uh and everything they put into it it's you can definitely feel the spirit and that's that's what i'm here for i feel like nothing really so <laughs> thank you lord it's 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 really not me and you know the Lord's brought me to the depths of myself many times over to realize that you know <laughs> what a mess I am you know so when people say things it's like whoa you know I just I know it's the Lord 
you know, and not myself. <laughs> the thing about setting goals for me is every time I do, it's like the Lord, you know, takes something else into the picture. But uh, so as far as that goes, I'm, my goal is just to concentrate on my discipleship and my commitment to the Lord. Because with that, you know, that secures you in whatever you do, whether it's music, acting, um, whatever, you know, just family life in general. Why walk this life halfway when you can have your cup full? <laughs> Why do it halfway? You know, that's every time I come to that, that point, you know, of, oh, should I just give this much? You know, I realize, my God, you know. What am I here for? What am I doing? You know, this is just my one life that I have to live for the Lord. What am I going to do with it? Am I going to fail, fail it? Or, you know, whatever circumstances the Lord brings across in our lives, you know, we, we, each, we come to that choice. You know, what am I, am I going to do this to the full or what? So. Come on. 